I'm Scott L. Miller. Welcome to my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. And about nine months ago, I did a video about why we chose to move to Nicaragua. And in that, we only talked about the country. And in March, on March 17th, I actually did most of a video on why we chose to live in Leon, but it never got posted because I never quite finished it. I got interrupted. I think the camera uh, died or something while I was recording and I wasn't able to finish. So I just got asked if I could do a video on why we chose Leon of the places in Nicaragua. And I was like, I need to just do this again because it's been too long and it'll be too hard to get back into the video I was already doing because it's been six months. So I am here on Central Park in downtown Leon. This is the main part of the city. I'm at the, the big fountain here and this is the basilica known as the cathedral, but it's actually a basilica. It is as far as I know, the largest basilica in Latin America, there's a long story about it was intended for Peru, it got mixed up and got built here instead, and they got the small one and we got the big one, but this is enormous, there's nothing like it in the region. This is a major tourist attraction here. You can actually go up on the roof. But why did we choose Leon? Let's lead off with some negatives, why we may not have chosen Leon, because this is important for some context. Number one reason is it is hot. It's not the hottest city in Nicaragua, but it is number two. Chinandega is the hottest. They are very similar and it is crazy hot here. Um, uh, it's We're at sea level, roughly just a few meters above. So when it gets, we're near the equator, this is the tropics. So every day is very, very warm here. We do have reverse seasons like all of Nicaragua. So what is summer in North America is considered winter here, but that's because it is the rainy season, not because it gets less sunlight. We still are in the north half of the northern hemisphere and we do have the sun technically in the in the same way that North America does, but it's very close to even 12 hours, 12 hours. Um, but it does get cooler in the North American summer and warmer in the North American winter, so they're reversed. But it's a two-season country. There's just the rainy season and the dry season called winter and summer. So that's a big negative. We don't like it that hot. We would much prefer, even Managua is much fresher and the mountains are actually cool compared to here. Leon is pretty hot, so that's a negative. It is a colonial city, which comes with pros and cons, but the cons here are that all of the buildings are very, very old. All the infrastructure is very, very old and having to live every day amongst ancient infrastructure, really, really old cobblestone streets, old pipes, lots of limitations on building and expansion. That's difficult, and in everyday life that wears on you, it makes living in a city much harder. Visiting, it's fantastic, uh, but for everyday life, those are generally negatives because you have to put up with those things. You're not really benefiting from them. They're more like a living museum, and obviously that comes with limitations. Of course, some people may decide that's something they really want, and a lot of people choose Leon, Granada, or Antigua, Guatemala, for exactly those reasons, because you can live in history. This is an ancient city, um, one of the absolute oldest in North America. It has a lot of history you're not going to get other places, so if you want to live in that situation, then this is fantastic for you, but there are always some, some negatives with any positive. Now, those are pretty much the reasons we would not choose it. The other big one is just location. We're a couple hours from any of the major airports, most notably Managua. It's about two hours if you go directly to Managua Airport, and that is the airport we would use locally. Right now, we don't use Managua that often. We use Liberia, which is about five, five and a half hours away, requires a crossing into Costa Rica. We are a little bit closer to the Honduran airports, especially the new one that's being built, but that's still many hours away, like six or seven hours, but it is viable to use that airport. All of the cities in Nicaragua are simply too far from um, uh, San Salvador Airport to use that as a land connection. We would essentially always fly to San Salvador if we were going to fly out of San Salvador. So that ends up being just too far away. But the Honduran and Costa Rican airports are viable. From Leon, Honduras becomes a little bit more usable than, say, if you're in Managua. Uh, but Liberia and certainly San Jose in Costa Rica are very far away. As travelers, for us, it's a pretty big negative that we would like to have an airport nearby so we can hop to other locations very trivially, uh, and that we cannot do. But let's get on to the pros. Why did we actually choose Leon at first, and why are we still here? Because obviously we could have come, learned, and moved on. So let's start with what got us here. So years ago, seven years ago, I lived in Granada, which is often seen as Leon's major competitor city. It is to the southeast of Managua, but it is actually part of the capital district. So you are in this mix of Managua, Masaya, Granada, and a few other cities that kind of make up the capital district. And while they're each independent enough to have their own style, their own culture, their own history, 
they're all just part of the capital. You can shop in between them. You can go to dinner between them. It's not a big deal. You don't think of it as traveling to go between those cities. Whereas going from Leon to Managua or Leon to Granada, it's a relatively big deal. You can certainly do it and you can return the same day if you had business you had to do. But if you were going to go for dinner, you'd have to spend the night or whatever. It's, it's a fair distance away. For here to Granada is about three hours. So of course you can do it, but it's, it's not a, oh, let's just go to Granada for food kind of thing. Uh, whereas Chinandega is close enough, it's about 45 minutes. If we're gonna go direct, we could do that. And we do sometimes run to Chinandega to get dinner, especially because they have a really nice Asian fusion restaurant that we don't have here that, that becomes viable. And likewise, a lot of people from Chinandega come to Leon for things every day because we, we are just a bigger city with more things. So having lived in Granada in the past, we wanted a city. We did like the colonial lifestyle for the most part. That was pretty interesting. But Granada is a big tourist city, big, big tourist city. It is the main tourist city in the country. And it is also very popular with extranjeros, with foreigners who choose to live in the country. So you have a lot of expats in Granada. Not so many that it takes over the city, but it is a large number, large enough that there is a tourist industry. There are tourist parts of town. When you go into the, the main drag of, of restaurants, that is foreigners that are eating there. I'm here in Central Park in Leon, and these are Nicaraguans that are here. I don't see a single expat in this park. I have in the past run into people I know, but in general, you're not going to run into more than two or three expats amongst the hundreds of Nicaraguans who are hanging out. This is a real local hangout location. That's how Leon is. Leon is almost without expats. Certainly there are some, certainly me included, uh, but, but Granada has a huge expat culture and that's not a bad thing on its own. But what happens with that is that there becomes industries based around that. You don't get that here. You don't have people who make their living begging from expats, for example, but in Granada, you have that as an entire industry. When you go out to eat, there are children who are assigned to go to every restaurant and just beg from the foreigners for their food, for money, for whatever. And it's, it's never ends. It becomes this really big thing. I'm going to turn a little bit. The sun is that way, but the really good light is bouncing off of the basilica. So this is me actually being lit by the basilica while I talk, which is pretty cool, honestly. Um, Central Park here is beautiful. Uh, it very much reminds me of the Central Park in Antigua, Guatemala as well. It's a very similar style, similar fountain, similar basilica and all that. I'm going to move back because it's, it's apparently the angle is over here. So so we really liked Leon from not being a tourist center. That is a big deal for us. We did not want to be in that again. We liked Granada enough that we fell in love with Nicaragua and decided to move to this as our home country. But the city was just not what we wanted as our full-time city. When I visit Granada, it's fantastic. I love getting to visit it. I love the selection of food. I like the tourist activities because when I go there, I am a tourist. So that works out just fine. But here in Leon, I want to be able to live every day and I need some places just not full of tourists. But I do appreciate that there are enough tourists that we have a hotel infrastructure. We have more restaurants than we might have otherwise. Uh, we do have a lot of museums and stuff. So there are things to do, which is really nice, but it's mostly centered around locals. Also, Leon, as another point, Leon is the second largest city in Nicaragua. So we have more resources for a place to live than almost anywhere else. Clearly Managua has the most. Managua doesn't have exactly the lifestyle we're looking for. Managua is a large city for sure. It does have the airport, which is nice. And I like Managua more than most people. So I don't want to be negative about Managua. I if I didn't have Leon and I had to live in Managua, I would be perfectly happy with that. That's great. It's a wonderful city. It has a lot of great restaurants. I love going there for the food. I love going there for the nightlife. It's really nice and it's rather safe, but it's not safe like Leon is safe. It's not safe like Messiah is safe. It's not safe like Matagalpa is safe. It's a much bigger city and it is not a walking city. Here in Leon and in Granada and in Messiah and in most of the cities, you can go out and walk absolutely everywhere. You have no need for a car. You may want one, of course, but you really get out on foot and can explore the city and do all the restaurants, all the sites, all the things on foot and that's fantastic and that's something that I want and in a lot of cities it's that way most of them but not Managua. Managua you expect you're going to need a car or you're going to be in taxis all the time. Everything is very spread out with large large miles of nothing in between things and there's a much higher level of danger. Not 
not a south side of Chicago, not a St. Louis, not a New Newark, New Jersey level of danger, but a level of danger that makes you say, well, I don't want to spend my entire life walking from place to place in large swaths across the city. It's just not the way you would want to do things. So that's different. Here, I want to walk places every day, all the time, and there's no problem whatsoever. Um, I am, while I'm talking, going to turn the camera around just so you can see the Basilica and this is Elote Row. These are all Elote and Esquite places all lined up here in the square. But there's lots of other fast food. There's ice cream and all kinds of things around the square and people just selling uh, trinkets and souvenirs and clothing and those kinds of things. But it is amazing to me just how much corn is sold here that they, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven or twelve Elote carts all in a row on the square. And if you go in other, like at La Merced, there's another three that are always there and, and other places have these stationary ones. So uh, Leon being the second largest city and having just lots of things without being Managua is a big deal. We'd be perfectly happy in other large cities, Matagalpa, uh, Esteli, um, Granada, for example, even Rivas, they're large enough to have all the things that you really need but Leon just has a little bit more. Being the second largest city, Leon is a little bit unique in the way that it is positioned within the country. It is in a region that is not very heavily populated. There's only two population centers of real merit in the West, that's Leon and Chinandega. There are three satellite cities that go with those. That is El Viejo to Chinandega, La Paz Centro to uh, Leon, and also Nagarote. All of those three together are very, they're, they're small cities, but they are cities. Um, but those five things represent basically all the population of Western, of what is called Western or kind of Northwestern Nicaragua. If you go to the equivalent up in the mountains, you get smaller cities, but close to each other. And so Matagalpa, for example, has nearly double the population of Leon as a department, but a much, it's a much smaller city as a city. So Leon is different in that it is a big city with very little around it, as opposed to Manag uh, Matagalpa, Esteli, and Hinotega, which are moderate sized cities near to each other with lots of villages clustered in around them so that they're large departments um, and relatively densely populated. Esteli as a department is much higher density than Leon. Leon's a very low density department with this giant giant city in the middle of it. Because of that, it functions a little bit like a Berlin in East Germany, an empty zone with a giant city as opposed to the old Western Germany, which is lots of small cities sprawling out all over the place. It's two just very different ways of approaching population uh, centers. Um, and so we get this dense city feeling here that you don't get other places with nothing around it. And it just makes for a different culture. But because of that, Leon is the center of tourism and the center of uh, logistics and all that for the region. So if you need buses going anywhere, everything comes through Leon for this part of the country. It's nothing like Managua. It's nothing like Granada as far as just the amount of stuff that goes through it. But if you need a bus going anywhere, you can you have public transportation and all those kinds of things very widely available here in Leon. That makes life very easy for those of us who live here. We get to be away from the giant capital region and not in the big mountain region and still have all of the resources you would have in those larger regions. The mountain region is one of those regions that's the highlands, that's uh, Matagalpa, Hinotega, and Esteli, uh, has way more people than this region, um, but no one ever thinks of it because they, they don't have the giant population centers that stand out in the same way. So you still have all the same logistics advantages up there. You have um, all the buses, all the, all the services, everything's available in that region as well. So these three major population centers basically have the most resources. And then you have smaller population centers that still have a lot of resources, but you, as you get down to like Rivas, you get out to Boaco, you start losing uh, some of those things. It becomes less convenient to live in those places. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to be in Leon is we want to have enough resources, uh, especially as extranjeros, as expats who live here. We want to make sure that we have access to great internet, good roads, public transportation places, um, uh, hotels, and just what, you know, government services, uh, immigration services, all those things we want to have somewhat local. So that's important to us as well. Leon is what we consider a mid-cost city. Now this is of course within the Nicaraguan context with places like Granada, San Juan del Sur, and Managua being your high cost centers. You're gonna pay a premium to live in any of those. And some places like Matagalpa, Hinotega, they're gonna be your low cost centers. They're gonna be very cheap to live in 
partially because you're farther out and have uh, fewer access to tourist activities and that sort of stuff. Leon falls pretty squarely in the middle. We're kind of prototypical for cost here in Nicaragua. It's not expensive, but it's not super cheap. You don't come here because it's the cheapest, but you can, you can safely come here with knowing that you're not gonna be paying extremely high prices because it's overwhelmed by the big businesses or by foreigners. So as a mid-cost city, it's, it's very much just average for Nicaragua, and that's nice. We can, it makes it very affordable to live here and for all of the services that we use. Leon is also, and this is very important, it is a university town. Granada's main business is, is tourism and you feel it. And there's nothing wrong with that, but like I said, it, it means that everyone sees you and knows you're a tourist or assumes you're a tourist and you get treated a certain way. When you're here in Leon, the big industry is the universities. This is a, a education town. There are so many universities here and private high schools. If you wanna to go to the exclusive private high schools while well, they're all over the country, and of course Managua has more, but Leon has a higher percentage of, of educational institutions than anywhere else in the country, um, along with Hinotepe in the, on the south side, or south of Managua, not in Managua, quite a bit south of Managua, but these are the two big university towns. Of course, all the major cities have universities, they all have private schools, but the level of them here, the, the number of choices that you have here in Leon is huge, and as a population percentage, the number of students here is crazy. Why is that a good thing? Well, one, it tends to make this a center of, of arts and culture. Messiah is the actual home of culture in, in Nicaragua. Boy, it's loud out here. Um, but Leon is really the, it's famously the center of the revolution. I'm actually looking at the first capital of the revolution signs on City Hall right in front of me. That's uh, right over here is City Hall. And uh, I think we have a band coming through. There is always a band. There's always a parade. There's always a festival here in Leon because it's such a big uh, cultural center and because so many historical events have taken place here. This is one of the um, original capitals of the country. It's one of the first two cities. So just, just a lot happens here every day. Um, but uh, because of the universities, Yes, it has all the, the culture, it has some of the great museums, some of the best in Central America, but one of the coolest things is the active lifestyle that you get because of all the students. In other cities of this size, you have much smaller nightlife and, and like club districts. Here, those things are enormous. There is seven days a week, major uh, activities going on on the street until like four o'clock in the morning. Anytime that you wanna go out for drinks, for food, for dancing, there is always something going on in Leon that's huge um, when you when you live here and because Nicaragua is a small country yes you get those things in Managua but like living in Granada if you wanted to go out after midnight there's extremely little to do your choices are very very limited but here in Leon they really aren't you have an awful lot of choices all the time and uh, and that's nice when you actually live here that's important you need options or you're going to feel very limited um, and it may start off great but over time you're going to get more and more frustrated as there isn't very much to do Leon really does a lot to hedge against that now of course if it doesn't have the activities that you particularly like that would not be the case but for us pretty much everything that we like to do we're able to do here in Leon own and uh except for travel of course which we have cars and we're able to go to other places nicaragua is very accessible for traveling around and going to other places i got a beautiful sunset coming across the square now so i'm taking advantage of that although i can't see a thing because of the sun in my eyes and i didn't bring sunglasses of course everyone sells sunglasses here i could just wave someone down they would they would bring me some but um <laughs> Uh, so we really appreciate that it's a university town and it sounds like is that really something that matters? Yes Every time we go out it matters the clubs are packed with people who are there late It makes it a lot of fun just like going out in Managua when I go out in Granada I'm really struggling with it. I hope someone's at this bar tonight or I'm just gonna be sitting there alone as the one person right it's it's a very different Cultural aspect of a city. Um, so we like that a lot. Leon really uh, comes up um, positive with that we do like the look of the city being colonial I mentioned that as a negative before but it's also a positive we live in a living museum there is important historic um, uh, cultural centers um, memorials and architecture and everything everywhere right everywhere you look everything you do this is a historic city with a lot to offer from a uh, historic perspective it's wonderful I, the cons overall, I would not weigh that as an overall pro, but it certainly has pro aspects that we enjoy. The cons are not so big as to make a major problem. 
Now, all that said, uh, location, weather, everything taken together, we lean heavily towards Leon. But honestly, if those factors I mentioned so far were the only ones that we had to consider, then it would not be my first choice city. It may not even be my second. I really like the Highlands. From a pure city perspective, Matagalpa is most likely the city that I like the most. Um, that's a funny thing to say, but it's like, I really like Hinotega, but it's too small. Um, I like Esteli, but I don't like the layout of the city as much. Matagalpa really hits a sweet spot for me in size, in activities, in culture, in cost. Um, it's really kind of perfect, but there's one really major thing, and that is Leon has something different than all the other cities uh, in Nicaragua. It is the only major city that has its own beaches actually within the sphere of the city. Lots of the cities in Nicaragua have assigned beaches. That is, the Department of Rivas has the Rivas beaches, and lots of them, including San Juan del Sur. But San Juan del Sur is about at least 25 minutes, if not 45 minutes away from Rivas. You don't think of it as being in Rivas the city. It is in Rivas the department. So it's, I think that's fireworks we're hearing. Um, so it is known as a Rivas beach, as many of the others are down there, all the southern beaches. But they are not part of the city. The sun is going down, so only part of my face is in the sunlight now. Um, when you're in Chinandega, it has several beaches, but they are not actually part of Chinandega, the city, just of the department. And so when you're there and you want to go to the beach, it's like a big thing. Managua has beaches, but they're like an hour or more away, and you have to drive through a lot of different towns to get there. In Leon, the beaches are actually suburbs of the city. There's two beaches, Potaloya and Las Pinitas, and they are just 17 kilometers outside of the city. I've had people make the drive in under 15 minutes, but normally we figure it's 25 from, from around downtown, but they are inside the city zone. They are part of the metropolitan area. They are part of the police department. They are part of the uh, resources, the Alcadia, all that stuff. They are part of the city. That is unique. There's nowhere else in Nicaragua that you find that. And so if you want that beach lifestyle, whether you want to live on the beach and have a city that's close, or you want to live in the city and have a beach that's close, or you want to go back and forth and have some combination, you are limited to only Leon works the way that it does. I'm going to start walking because it's so loud on here, around here. Oh, and we have a band actually showing up. So that's, that's legit. Uh, so if you're in, and if you only want to go to the beach occasionally, many of the cities work out just fine. And even Madagalpa, you're only a few hours from the beach. But if you want to be really close, the Managuas, the, uh, the uh, Diviambras, the Chinandegas, they all have reasonably close beaches, and it's not a big deal to go if it's a special occasion. But for us, we really want to be on the beach a large portion of the time, and that is before we ended up buying things on the beach. We do. We do a lot on the beach now because we invest there, but just for a lifestyle, we wanna be in a city and a beach combination that's really important to us and to a lot of people. And Leon is unique in able to do that. And not just in Nicaragua, but there are very few cities in all of Central America that have a major city near to the beach. That's just not something that comes up that much. Almost all of them have cities that can get to the beach. Um, San Salvador, Guatemala City, Antigua, um, it, the uh, Tegucigalpa, right? All through the region, it's not a big deal to get to the beach. But if you look at a map, none of those major cities actually sit on a beach. One of the closest ones is San Pedro, uh, San, San Pedro Sula. Wow, in Honduras. Um, but even it's a good hike from its beach. And it's a city famous for not being very safe. It is definitely not a place that you would generally choose to just move to. And I don't even know if it's beaches or someplace you would really want to go. There are many towns in Honduras actually on the beaches that probably make a lot more sense. Uh, so it's, it doesn't come up the same. Panama City definitely is one that actually sits on the water proper. So they're unique and really far away. None of the major cities in um, Costa Rica sit on the Pacific beach uh, and none of them that are anywhere near the size or cultural importance of Leon are close to the beach at all. So Leon across all of Central America is pretty unique in that it is a major city, very, very, very close to the water so that you can have that combined city and water lifestyle. And what's important from that, when I say how close it is, what I mean is, is that we can go for to the beach for dinner and run home. You can be on the beach and run into Leon for food or go out clubbing and run home. There's just regular taxi runs going back and forth. There's a local city bus going back and forth. None of the others work that way. 
It's always a special trip. You have to convince someone to take you out to the beach. You have to arrange something to take you out to the beach, but not here. It is part of the city. The city public transportation runs go out to it for, for like 25, 40 cents, something like that. Um, and a taxi going out, yes, it's more than getting around the city, uh, but if you were just going in within the, the city blocks and had, say, four people, right now that would cost you, um, if you're not getting gringo priced, it would cost you 160 cord. And if you wanted to take those same four people all the way out to the beach at, say, Las Benitas, the farthest point, it's gonna cost you 400 cord. It's a little bit more than double, but only a little bit more than double to go all the way to the farthest point of the beach. That's not bad at all when you're considering you know, that's, that's a taxi um, and, and that's, you know, a beach from the city. So that's, that's huge for us. That is a slam dunk and that is why we chose Leon over everything else. There's lots of pros to Leon and if it didn't have any other pros, that beach may not have won out. But Leon was a good contender and then when you add in the beach, it is absolutely the winner. And it's not just a beach. This is important too. It is one of the best beaches in the country, uh, or two actually of the best beaches in the country. They have some of the best sunsets, uh, some of the best restaurants in um, Las Benitas is generally considered to be the most up and coming of the newer beaches. So obviously San Juan del Sur is the giant beach. It has the largest population on the water in the country. It has the most infrastructure. It is the most well known. It is the only one that has an international port of entry. That is a tourist beach. There's also Corinto and, and a few others that you can come in as a port of entry, but they are not for tourists. It's like people coming off of working ships. Um, and so having one of the high-end beaches that's up and coming with lots of growth and things happening in the future and having it be in the city, there is nothing else like it. That alone could drive you not only to Leon, but to Nicaragua to have that experience here in Leon if that's something you're looking for. If that's not something that's important to you, it is very plausible that the mixture of things that make Leon work for us won't be good enough to make it the choice for you. Leon is certainly not for everybody and the heat especially is a major, major problem. <laughs> Someone wants to film right where I am. So I'm moving on. And uh, there's lots of things that would make a lot of sense. Hopefully this wind noise isn't too bad. I'm going past bouncy castles. These are almost always here. We'll just grab these so you can see. This is just fun stuff that goes on here on the main square at Central Park. And uh, that is why we chose Leon. We love it here. We are glad that we chose it. We are doubling down more and more on being here. But I will say, if I wasn't in Leon, my top choice otherwise would definitely be Madagalpa. And that is one of the reasons why you're going to be seeing a lot of footage as we do a lot of filming in Madagalpa, because I love going up there to visit. And there's a lot to do and a lot of things that I think are well worth filming. Uh, and all the cities. Nicaragua has a lot to offer everywhere. So it's actually a pretty hard decision choosing an individual city. But Leon is definitely a good contender for almost anyone. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe, comments below, ask your questions. You can sponsor the channel with Buy Me A Coffee. Links are down in the description and I will see all of you tomorrow.